Coming up on today's show, Tesla and NHTSA yet again discuss exactly what NHTSA's five-star crash tests do and do not say. Audi promises a 12-minute to 80% full recharge time for all of its electric cars from 2020 onwards. And Formula E race car driver Daniel Abt sets a new electric car record by driving backwards really, really fast. These stories and more coming next. Hi everyone, welcome to another weekend roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transport. This show is super crammed, so let's get on with our first story. Tesla and the US National Highway Traffic Safety Administration have yet again had a disagreement over what NHTSA's official five-star crash test rating system means. Quoting data from the NHTSA tests on its Model 3 electric car, Tesla said at the start of the week that Model 3 has the lowest probability of injury of all cars the safety agency has ever tested. But NHTSA, as it has done in the past, reiterated its statement that it does not distinguish safety performance beyond its five-star rating system, arguing that there is no safest vehicle among those vehicles achieving five stars. Honestly, it's a pointless argument from both sides, as a five-star rating should tell you everything you need to know. It's a safe car. Switching the auto industry to electric cars will cause 100,000 jobs to be lost. And that's according to Volkswagen boss Herbert Diaz, who is pushing back against a new proposal in Europe to reduce CO2 emissions by 35% by 2040, something that would require automakers to make far more plug-in cars. It's not clear where he gets his figures from, but it doesn't look good for the company that's simultaneously trying to set itself up as the dominant force in the EV world, and promises its range of long-range electric cars will be priced at a point everyone can afford. Time is running out, and if the world doesn't accelerate its transition to clean energy and transportation, we're all boned. That's essentially the message from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which issued a new stark report this week, stating that if we are to keep global temperature rise to a point where we could just about deal with the effects of climate change, we need to slash our fossil fuel consumption to one third of its current levels by 2050. Part of that change can be affected by changing how we use our cars and what fuels them, but it also means that we need to start taking personal responsibility for our own carbon emissions, not pointing fingers at other countries or people and saying, well, they're not doing anything. We've got one planet, folks. Let's not F it up. Mercedes-Benz has really been ramping up its plans for plug-in vehicles of late and has just said that its GLE plug-in hybrid, due to launch next year, will be the first plug-in hybrid to offer an all-electric range over 100 kilometers, 62 miles per charge. That decision is partly to ensure that the GLE plug-in hybrid meets new tougher economy and emissions targets, but it also ensures the car classifies for credits and incentives under stricter WLTP test cycles, which have caused a whole lot of plug-ins to just lose their eligibility. The GLE plug-in hybrid will launch in the second half of next year, probably as a 2020 model year car. BMW has issued an official recall on nearly all 2018 and 2019 plug-in vehicles sold in the US. This includes not only the i3 and i8, but plug-in hybrids like the Mini Countryman SE All 4 and BMW's X5 xDrive 40e. The reason? Potential capacitor failure in the car's portable charge cables, which could result in a shock to the user or start a fire. BMW will contact owners shortly for replacement of the affected units under warranty. Faraday Future has been doing pretty well of late, but this week its world turned upside down again when it announced it's trying to get out of the $2 billion deal inked earlier this year with Evergrande Health. It's all to do with a power struggle between Evergrande Health and YT Gia, the founder of Faraday Future, who is currently living in the US, but allegedly owes a lot of money in his home country of China. This one is messy, and I wouldn't be surprised if it causes Faraday Future's death. Rare earth magnets, like neodymium, are often used in electric car motors because they're incredibly strong for their given size. They're also found in lots of other modern products like cell phones, laptops, and spinning platter computer hard drives. But they're also in a finite resource, which is why the Oak Ridge National Laboratory in the US has just demonstrated a second life project for rare earth magnets, taking them from old computer hard drives and gadgets and using them to build a brand new electric motor. It's not a new type of magnet per se, but it could dramatically help lower lifetime environmental costs of rare earth metal mining. Under the late Sergio Marchioni, Fiat Chrysler wasn't all that keen on plug-in vehicles, with only the Fiat 500e and Chrysler Pacifica hybrid minivan to show for it. 
Now, FCA has announced plans to change that, announcing the subcompact Jeep Renegade SUV will be offered as a plug-in hybrid from 2020 onwards. It will be built in Italy and will be the first of 12 new electrified models due to hit the market from the company by 2022. Mercedes-Benz has officially broken ground this week on a brand new battery production facility in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. It's one of several new production facilities planned around the world where Mercedes-Benz will produce its own lithium-ion battery packs for use in a range of new electric and plug-in hybrids. The battery production facility will likely be up and running in time for the 2020 launch of the Mercedes-Benz EQC, the brand's first long-range all-electric model. Building on the technology developed by its sister company Porsche for the Taycan electric sports sedan, Audi has confirmed that its upcoming e-tron GT, which we'll see for the first time at the LA Auto Show, will come to market in 2020 with a 12-minute recharge time from empty to 80% full. It's made possible by the new next-gen 800-volt CCS quick charging system and says Audi will be included on all of its electric models from 2020 onwards. Some automakers may be reaching the 200,000 plug-in car limit set out by the U.S. Federal Tax Incentive Program for EVs, and there's certainly already efforts afoot on Capitol Hill to expand the program to ensure continued incentives for EV purchases. But this week, John Barrasso, a Wyoming senator, went the other way, proposing an immediate cancellation of the federal EV tax credit and begin charging a user fee to all alternative fuel vehicles. That would make them more expensive to use than gasoline vehicles. His incentive? nearly half a million dollars in campaign contributions in current campaign cycle from the oil industry. Hmm. And now it's time for those short shorts. As usual, I'm going to blast through some stories super quickly and you can follow them up by following the links in the show notes below. Feeling the pressure of the ongoing China-US trade war, Tesla has pushed ahead its plans to build a factory in China. It's currently the sole bidder on a $145 million plot in Shanghai, and government approval for the purchase could happen later this month. The Nissan Leaf and Chevrolet Volt are America's biggest depreciating cars. That's according to data from iccars.com. Both the first generation Leaf and Volt are now showing their age, with newer models now available, and battery woes isn't helping the Leaf's already low used price. Tesla is facing a legal challenge by the National Labor Relations Board over a document it produced two years ago designed to remind employees what their obligations are and renew their vows, or in other words, stop leaking stories to the press. The plaintiff says this infringes worker rights. Bollinger has announced a new variant of its rugged electric utility truck, the Bollinger B2 pickup. Larger than the B1, it will include a 120 kilowatt hour battery pack, but it will have the same construction and features as this smaller sibling, just with a pickup bed too. Tesla has pushed its System 9 update to all compatible cars this week via over-the-air updates. Full autopilot is not engaged yet, but one neat new feature is the ability to use your car's camera as a video camera in the event of an accident. Spy shots released this week show Renault appears to be testing its next generation Zoe ahead of a vehicle launch in the next year or so. The car is said to be larger than the current model and could include a 50 kilowatt hour pack and DC quick charging. Customers who want to buy a new Tesla in the US and get the full $7,500 tax incentive from the feds have until October 15th, that's this Monday, to order their car. That's because Tesla is giving itself a two-month lead time between order and delivery. The Hyundai Kona Electric has now officially had its launch event in the US, but it will only go on sale in select markets at first, the same compliance car states where other EVs have been sold in the past. It's likely that battery shortage, not apathy, though, is to blame for the decision. A massive German consortium involving more than 20 companies, including automakers and battery suppliers, has cancelled its plans for a gigafactory-like battery production facility in Europe. The Terra E consortium says none of the businesses involved were ready to provide the necessary funds to make it possible. The UK government has announced big changes to its plug-in car grant. Looking forward, only zero-emission vehicles, EVs and fuel cell cars will be supported with a grant of up to £3,500 per vehicle. Plug-in hybrids will no longer be eligible for any incentives at all. Talking of incentives, GM has confirmed that it anticipates it will hit its 200,000th plug-in vehicle sold in the US this quarter, triggering the ramp down of incentives under the US federal tax code, just like Tesla is preparing to undergo. So if you want a new Chevy plug-in, buy now. 
Tesla has resolved an outstanding issue with the state of Nevada that caused it to underpay $655,000 in unemployment tax for workers at its gigafactory. Tesla is calling it a clerical error, but only paid after the state took it to court. And that's your short shorts. There will be more, of course, next week. Vertical Aerospace, the British-based vertical air taxi company, has announced its plans to bring an air taxi service to operation in three years. Unlike other vertical passenger drone aircraft companies, Vertical Aerospace says it will avoid any issues with regulations not allowing autonomous passenger VTOL craft by using trained pilots to fly the vehicles until air regulations have caught up. It says it will have short-haul flights operating with a range of around 800 kilometers or 500 miles no later than 2022. Do you ever forget to plug in your electric car? Generally, I'm pretty good at remembering, but robotic manufacturing machine company Fanuc just demonstrated a solution to those who forget, an automated plugging in bot. It was all part of a trade display at a recent event where Fanuc had two of its robots lift a Chevrolet Bolt EV high into the air to examine its undercarriage and suspension and then plug it in too. Not a new thing, we've seen robotic pluggers in before, but very much overkill. And finally, Formula E race car driver Daniel Abd is most certainly someone who has drunk the EV Kool-Aid, showing off his skill on the racetrack regularly. But this week, he broke a new record in the Schaffer 4E Performance, a custom-built Audi RS3 with four Formula E motors developing a total of 880 kilowatts fitted. What was the record? Driving in reverse, really quickly. The car not only set a new record, 210 kph, or about 130 miles per hour, but it also made for some truly amazing videos. I've linked in the show notes, so make sure you watch. And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. As usual, like, comment, subscribe using the links below, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. And if you can, please consider supporting us through Patreon. We really couldn't do this show without all of the fantastic support we get from Patreon patrons, and it's never too late to become one yourself. Plus this month, if you sign up at patreon.com forward slash transport evolved with a donation greater than $5 per month, you'll get a store-wide discount on our new transport evolved shop for the month of October. And that includes our limited edition Halloween t-shirt. Give OPEC a fright and support the show too. You can buy this shirt too without being a patron. Okay, that really is it. Thanks for joining me. And as always, don't forget to be better, smarter and kinder. Oh, and before I go, congratulations to my daughter who just passed her driving permit test. Keep evolving.